So how do you find ruler fractions? Hi, I'm Jimmy Chang. I've been teaching college math for over nine years, and we're here to discuss how you can use rulers to write fractions. And it all depends on the kind of ruler that you have, but once you know what kind of units you want, just make sure that the ruler has enough what we call marks or ticks on the ruler so that you can go for the fractions that you're looking for. Now, depending on the ruler, you can work with halves, quarters, eighths, and sixteenths. So for the purposes of this demonstration, we'll be looking at rulers with sixteen ticks. Now let's take a look at, for example, the area between four and five. If you count the area between four and five, you'll discover that there's sixteen ticks. So that means for each tick, it represents a sixteenth of an increase. So for example, if you take a look at this very first one here, that represents four and one sixteenth. two ticks, four and two sixteenths. But you can use these as opportunities to teach students to reduce fractions because as you know with two sixteenths, you can reduce both of these by two, so this will be four and one eighth. Now, three ticks will give you four and three sixteenths, four ticks will give you four and four sixteenths, but as you know, you can teach the students that four and sixteen reduces to four and one-fourth. And then you could do it for any number of ticks that you want between whole numbers, even at the halfway mark. At the halfway mark, you know there's eight ticks in between four and five, so it'd be four and eight sixteenths, which you can reduce to four and one-half because both sides are reducible by eight. But you can use a ruler at any point and use any number of ticks that you're looking for, and you can convert into any fraction or mixed number that you like, and students will learn fractions in a very straightforward manner. So I'm Jimmy, and that is how you learn ruler fractions.